Hey guys, just a quick video on the repair process I did for this Ju Juice Box 40. It's a 40 amp level two charger and how I'll explain real quickly why I think this relay burnt up. You can see that's pretty nasty. What you guys can't tell is how bad this thing actually smells. So even as I open this up, oops, it smells pretty bad. So anyway, um, I've had this, this level two charger and it's been working fine for maybe three or four years, but that was always with vehicles that drew, you know, six to, I don't know, six to seven, 7.5 um, kilowatts. And the Rivian can pull all the way to 11.5 or basically a 48 amp circuit. So this is only a 40 amp circuit, but the Rivian can pull all the way to 48 amps. So why this thing basically burnt up like that is I think a combination of a couple things that went on and it might be a unique case with how this was set up um, at our building. So we, this was set up at a building of ours that's, gosh, really, really quite old, maybe built in the 50s or 60s. And the transformer within it um, was also super old. It was like the size of a closet. And it was, it's notorious for having significant voltage drops. So for one reason or another, there was no need to upgrade the transformer, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that building's getting torn down. And... Um, I've recently just uninstalled this. So this is the new relay, just to cut to the chase. This is the old relay. You can buy this from eBay. Gosh, I'll put it in the comments on the link to where um, the eBay buyer bought this from. But what I think happened here is that the Rivian pull, can pull all the way um, up to 48 amps, right? It can pull something like 11.5 kilowatts, um, whatever the math works out to be. But because of the voltage drop at our building, I reckon that this unit doesn't have the necessary safety features to sense any of that and turn itself off. So it just kept trying to pull, you know, lots of amperage through lower voltage and this thing just basically fried. That's what I think happened. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm not, you know, um, an electrician. So someone in the comments that knows this stuff better can explain that to me. So anyway, um... There is one way you can prevent this if you have a vehicle like the Rivian. Uh, I did notice that on the control panel, on the main screen, on the Rivian itself, there in the center console, that when you're in the charge mode and in the charging screen, whatever it's called, you have the option to select the amperage that's being fed into the truck. So I did notice that when this thing was erroring out, and by the way, the error that occurred was when this was in it and burnt up, the motherboard or the circuit board would still flash these lights showing an error um, five times blinking. So whatever that means. These were blinking five times uh, simultaneously. So that pointed to an error message that, you know, online you could browse and basically go through some troubleshooting steps at the end of the day. I realized that the motherboard was probably fine. It just needed a new um, replacement relay. So this relay apparently is a better made unit, but it looks exactly the same. Um, hopefully it has better components inside. So anyway, like I said, the Rivian has an option to lower the incoming current being fed into it from a level two. It should automatically sense, but for some reason, the automatic sensing part of it I don't know, it's a little bit finicky. Um, just so you guys know, when this thing blew, even though this is a 40 amp unit, it showed it was pulling 48 amps. So that's probably why it just, you know, overtaxed this whole thing and, and, and basically um, burnt up this wire. It's pretty nasty and it smells pretty bad, which you guys can't tell um, over video here. So pretty quick and easy. Oh, by the way, um, I do have a backup 30 amp uh, level two, and because that building has pretty massive um, uh, voltage fluctuations, the Rivian was only pulling 15 amps when I plugged that in. So something must have happened, but anyway, I, I, cons I, I don't know exactly where the error was. I can't blame Rivian, I can't blame Juicebox, although I think Juicebox could have better components here. 
Um, and I can't blame, I probably should be blaming the transformer in the building. So anyway, just real quick to take this off, um, it's oriented this way, right? Oops, oriented this way. And it's a real easy process. Um, you just undo the two main feed lines, which this goes to the cable, the charging cable over here. This other line right here, the skinnier one, this is the, the main supply line, the 240 volt, 220 volt. And it's cool because when you purchase this from eBay, um, the gentleman who I believe sells them was a former employee. And uh, it's just two bolts to remove this. So the mounting bolt would have been here and the mounting bolt would have been there. It's like a 10 millimeter, or no, it's a, it's a standard size, I can't remember. Who remembers standard sizes? Um, I certainly cannot. So undo the zip tie, this is a new zip tie. And all you have to do, since he does ship this with, he does ship this with um, the wire harnesses all built in, like this twisted pair, this twisted pair with the, with the connector. And let's see, what else? And I believe, oh no, it was just these two. These all come with this kit already all pre-done. It basically looks like a version of this. All you have to do is de-pin this blue line, this blue wire right here. So take a little pin. Um, it was, where was it? Uh, let's see. I can't remember because the colors are slightly different, but it was one of these lines and it was the blue one. needs to be depinned. This one needs to be depinned from the old one and you just stick it into the new one and you have your new harness, okay? I'm not gonna go through it because it's kind of hard to do this with one hand and film at the same time. So the only trick is you don't need to splice a new cable here. You just need to undo this clamping um, uh, connector. And what this does is once you undo it and loosen it up, you'll be able to use some of the slack that's in here. So yeah, you're, you're gonna cut to where, at least in my case, oops. In my case, this was essentially old wire. So I cut it somewhere around here um, into the unburnt portion, or I should say over here into the unburnt portion and just pulled and pulled the, the J1772 line a little bit shorter. So now instead of this 24 foot that originally came with it, maybe it was 25, um, it's now like six inches shorter, you know, no big deal. So once you get all that in, just follow the lines that um, you used and then everything should fall back in place. Now, there's a chance that if you do have this kind of um, uh, replacement fix, your motherboard might be shot. So if you don't see at all that these are blinking, that's probably a good sign that it's, you know, that it's your motherboard. And at that point, I think you might as well buy a new unit. By the way, when you take this off, this little ribbon cable, which is the the LED um, wire harness, essentially, that slides right into this guy. So I can't. You definitely can't do it with one hand, but you gotta hold it with one hand over here, and then use your left hand to slide that in, way down there, and then you know close the close the case. You will also need these special Torx bits which are security bits and they call, and you know, you can buy them on Amazon. They're basically tamper resistant star bits is how they call them. And this is very first size right here. It's kind of dumb because anyone can buy these. They're not really all that secure. So whatever. So that's pretty much it. Um, hope that helps you guys. All right, bye.